Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Assemble. My name is Jonathan and today we have two books we're going to talk about today. The first one being Carnage, Black, White and Blood. And the next one is Aliens Number 1. Both had just come out yesterday and interestingly enough guys, I'm not really interested in either of the two kind of characters here. Obviously the Xenomorph or Carnage, but I figured... What better way to kind of kickstart this kind of comic review on a weekly basis than to pick two characters, two series, two books that I'm not really that interested in, and maybe the idea is that they can help turn my turn my thoughts on them around. So first and foremost, guys, let's get into Aliens, and we'll talk about what to expect from this book and what I really liked and disliked about it. So one of the things about Aliens is I'm not actually that big of a fan of the movies. I've only seen a few of them. I think there's a few of them at this point. I'm actually a bigger fan of the Predator series, but I figured why not check this out and see what we got going on. So first things first, obviously when you start flipping through the pages, you see the art is really well done. It's beautiful. It looks good. Character faces are really well drawn. It really just kind of brings it all together. I really find like the art is a make or break for, for comic books, and I find that this really does make it and doesn't break it at all um you know whether it's like i said the characters or the xenomorphs themselves it just it is a really good art style that i think will lend itself well to the story moving forward so if you're if you're someone who really has to look at the art to really know if you're gonna like a book or not this is one of those ones that i say really well done so for the story guys obviously the story centered around gabriel cruz gabriel cruz is a soldier in the epsilon space station you don't really know too much about him you don't really see a lot of kind of background details but you know he's gone through some things he's had some run-ins with the xenomorphs before he's having nightmares about them and one of the most interesting things is that he's done you're catching him at the tail end of his career He's, the story centers around him actually going home to reunite with his son. So one of the things that I found most interesting is that this isn't a, a character that's in their prime. This is a character that's well out of their prime. He's done with it. He's he's having nightmares about the Xenomorphs. This is a character mentally, emotionally is just not with it anymore. So when he starts getting home, guys, obviously one of the things that you see is that his son is actually part of the resistance. Now this kind of sets up for a good kind of clash of two different faiths and two different beliefs here obviously the good perfect soldier who's obviously been subjected to some some terrors and torment and obviously the idealistic son who's trying to fight back against the big corporation so when he gets home when gabriel gets home you know obviously for him all he wants to do is have a beer with his son and you know obviously catch up what he doesn't know is that his son actually has a mission to grab his wristband because there is a plan in place to kind of go up to the space station where they think there's actually cyber warfare stuff going on up there. But they don't actually know what's going up there until the end of the book. At the end of the book, obviously, one of the most culminating moments of the book is when there's two two people kind of just doing their job, essentially. And there's, a, there's something that docks there. And they're like, oh, what is that? I thought it was a probe. And then one of the guys turns around, goes to open it, and all of a sudden it's boom right there, right? Look at this panel. This it's crazy. This panel's crazy. And when you look at it, it was a big shock to me. I was like, oh, I was. I mean, whatever. I wasn't expecting it. All of a sudden, the, the art just pops out, and you just see it, and you're like, what? And then obviously at the end, you know, they obviously find out that it's actually not cyber warfare. It's biological warfare going on. But at the end of the book, I actually ends with the xenomorphs being released the face huggers being released and it sets up for gabriel cruz to come back the perfect soldier who's had enough who's been through enough is called back into action because of his son getting into things that he probably shouldn't have been getting into obviously good intentions bad execution and unfortunately it looks like gabriel cruz is gonna have a run in with the xenomorph one more time so what would I rate Aliens, guys? Aliens is... It's tough to say because coming... Well, I say tough to say, but coming into this book, I really wasn't that excited for it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm notoriously scared when it comes to scary movies. I, I wasn't a big fan of the IP itself. The aliens freaked the crap out of me. But I look at it, I look at this, and I say pretty good you know i'd say it's probably, probably about four out of five you know if i was a big fan of alien probably about a five out of five right um you don't really need to know a lot of the backstory here it's one of those things where you know it's pretty fresh it's pretty easy to all you really have to know is that aliens are bad you know and if you know that then you know pretty much all you need to know so if you're interested in checking this out, guys, if this is one of the books this week that you were, you were kind of iffy on, I'd say go pick it up, whether it's through uh, your local comic book store or your digital means. It is very good, very well worth it, and it's probably the best book out of the two that I've read. But with that being said, I'm not going to spoil anything about Carnage because I think Carnage is 
in its own right a book that I think is really good. But definitely, if you're looking for this and you think this might be one you might be interested, go pick it up. All right, guys, so now, now we talk about Carnage. And Carnage has probably been one of the most interesting books I think I've ever read. My comic book history doesn't go back, back that far. I've only been in comics on and off since probably like 2012. So for me, when I look at Carnage, I'm like, it was a really interesting book. Now, one of the things is I don't really like Carnage as a character. I look at Carnage and I'm, I, it's just very over the top. He, he's just one of those characters that it's just like, it's it's almost like a mockery of himself, right? I know there's a lot of Carnage fans out there, but I look at like the over the top murder and everything. I'm like, yeah, look, okay, it's fine, whatever. Um, so I bought this thinking, you know what, give it a chance and we'll see at the end whether it's a book that I'm going to continue on or if it's a book I'm just going to put down a one and done scenario. Well, I picked it up and what I found was that it was really well done. So... The story kind of jumps over a bunch of different places. And maybe this is just my my inability to kind of pick up the story threads where they are. It really seems like there's three stories that take place within this book. There's obviously the first part where it looks like Carnage is fighting Cloak and Dagger, Captain America, Spider-Man. Um, you know, kind of tying it all in with Shriek and everything going on there. There's obviously the second story where it's back to the Western uh, where it looks like there is a sheriff, a federal marshal hunting down Carnage. And then there's the third story where it's actually, um, and this third story actually splinters off into two. It's almost like a pick your own adventure novel with Carnage being the main character. And this third one splinters off and it's a U.S. agent, you know, kind of Flash Thompson, Agent Venom kind of thing with, with Carnage instead. And so one of the things I actually really liked is each of the three stories really told a different aspect to Carnage. Well, I say that, but the first two are pretty simple. Well, actually, I'm let me back that train up. So in the first part, in the first story, you really see this love story with Carnage. You know, the real like bond that he has with Shriek. And it, it really is like a characterization I would have never expected from a Carnage book. Now, remember, I've never really read a Carnage book before. Whenever I've read a Carnage story, he's always been the antagonist against Spider-Man, right? So for me, really seeing that kind of love side, that heart side that, you know, obviously it's a little twisted. But with that being said, it is a really good start to the book. I really liked it. Once again, it wasn't really something I was expecting. Then we go into the second story, which is the Federal Marshal hunting Carnage down. This was a more kind of like, you know, murderous bloodpath story that you get. And, um, you know, I didn't really care for this one. I really thought it like unless this kind of continues on and there's like a meaning to it and something that really ties it all together. Um, I really looked at that and I was like, OK, like this is probably like the least interesting part of the story. And then the third part actually is where it's, you know, the new, you know, Agent Venom, but with car with Carnage. And then what the most interesting thing is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show some panels of this one on the screen here. And one of the most interesting thing, it does like a choose your own adventure roll a dice kind of thing like a six-sided die and you really get to choose where you go um you know one of the most interesting things is that i actually had a hard time following along with this i just wanted to read it straight up and try to piece it all together what i would really say is definitely follow the instructions i guess it's one of those things where if you don't follow the instructions you can't get lost but one of the one of the things is that at the end of it it, it comes to two endings here now obviously the first ending now, the first ending is where Carnage kind of does what Carnage does. He's a murderous kind of a symbiote, and he is what he is. The second ending, where I actually want to see the story go, and maybe I'm a sucker for redemption stories, is I want to see them actually go with the, the actual, the second ending of the third story, where he's actually like a superhero, where there's actually, um, you know, a chance at redemption for Carnage. Now, obviously, Carnage is one of those villains that I don't think will ever be redeemed. You know, it's it's almost like... Like a Green Goblin, for example. Like, could you redeem Green Goblin? Yeah, maybe for like a storyline, and then obviously you're going to take it back. But um, it's one of those things where like Carnage and the history behind him, could there be a redemption story there? Hmm, interesting. It's one of those things where I think the kind of idea behind the three different stories and kind of how they all tie together, and you know, definitely when I when I see this again and I and I read issue number two. I'm definitely going to pay more attention to the six sided die kind of thing and just follow along that way because um, it's one of those things where I definitely was a little bit confused. But with that being said, this was a great issue overall. It was a great first issue. It kind of ties, you know, it kind of brings back like, you know, who is Carnage? There's a, there's, and then, you know, you kind of see who is Carnage, right? A murder symbiote. Then you start seeing a little bit more of Carnage, right? The love and the heart for Shriek. And then you see what there could be of Carnage, right? Like the, the, agent venom program right so there's like so many different things going on and to me this was a really great first issue now if i want to talk about the art the art was really well done 
it had like not that many colors to it which was really interesting i actually it was one of those things where you know in contrast to aliens aliens had a lot of colors it was very well colored like there was so much so much colorful range there that when i was looking at carnage for example it was very like reds whites and blacks kind of thing and maybe that's you know black white and blood right black white and red kind of thing right maybe maybe that's the whole thing about it right so i obviously wasn't expecting that but did that take away from the story no did i enhance the story in some ways yes is this still a book i would recommend even if you're not a fan of the carnage like character yeah i say i would i say like you know this is probably going to be a story that takes probably three four five issues to really get off the ground here and it's really gonna be interesting to see where they take it um but for me as someone who's reading a lot of venom as someone who's always been reading spider-man as much as i can this is actually a good book and i would really say if you're a fan of the symbiotes if you're a fan of spider-man it's not a bad idea to pick this up and see exactly where it goes so once again, guys, what would I rate this out of five? I'd probably rate this probably about a three and a half, probably four if you're a big fan of Carnage. Um, once again, I obviously the the pick your own adventure was a little confusing for me, just because it's it's something I've never seen before in a book. But if you're used to that, if you understand it, if you get through it, it's probably closer to a four, to be honest with you. But once again, that's what I thought about Carnage, guys. Definitely this week, two solid options there if you're interested in starting either of these books. Um, every week, guys, I'm going to try and pick up some books and just try, try and talk about them. Um, if I'm not really following a story in a weekly series, I probably won't pick them up. But if there's like a new number one or if there's a new jumping on point, I'll try my best to pick them up. I just don't want to have to like pick up 20 issues of a back of like a backstory to try and pick something up just to talk about it on a week to week basis. So um, but definitely, guys, in terms of starting off two solid book offerings here, and I'm excited to see where both these go for the, you know, for I guess for the the close future, right? Let's see where they go for the next few issues. I know Aliens looks to be a monthly release, so this one will come up again in April. Um, I'm not sure where Carnage is yet. Carnage definitely could be a a biweekly or a monthly. I just don't know off the top of my head. But with that being said, obviously two great books, guys, and that's it for the show this week, guys. If you're interested in checking out more of this stuff, I'll be posting. Uh, more reviews on a weekly basis talking about some mcu stuff doing some mcu reviews and we're doing some trades reviews guys i got a stack of trades behind me avengers spider-man venom captain america that i'm gonna have to get through here and talk about very soon so if you're interested in checking all that stuff out make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys next time here on assemble my name is jonathan thank you guys and i'll see you later peace